All right, I'm making a quick video here about uh, how to make something that's inexpensive into something that's a bit more useful. So this is my uh, my engine stand. Got this at the tractor supply. Um, you notice this is one of those where um, it has a little pin, and uh, you can you can turn the engine into different positions, um, and uh, with a little, you know, a bar. But the problem with this is, is there's, there's a couple issues. First of all, you see that pin only engages eight different locations. Um, and second of all, once you get a couple hundred pound engine on here, it may not be, you know, absolutely centered. So when you get up here, it's gonna, it's gonna crank around really fast when you start turning it. Um, and uh, it's just, you know, um, a little floppy. So, I mean, even once you get, once you put the pin in here and it's in there, and you get a, you know, 400 to 1200 pound engine on there flopping around, um, you know, you can't really start torquing on it or ba banging on it or, you know, pulling wrenches if it's going to be flopping around like that. So, um, what my plan is here is, uh, went to uh, Harbor Freight today and I picked up this winch. Now this winch, you can see, it has a worm gear in it. This worm gear allows this, this spline gear here to run at a, a much slower rate. Can you see how the, the gear ratio works on that? This is a, a one ton um, crank wrench or winch. Um, and the idea behind that is I would like to have this kind of control over my engine stand. So I'm going to take this shaft off and I'm going to take this worm gear off and I'm going to weld it onto the back side of that and we'll see if we can get um, a little bit better performance out of that device with just a $40 winch. Um, and if it doesn't work then, you know, I can still go back to the manual and this winch won't, won't have been that expensive. Hopefully if I don't destroy this all together I can put it back together again. But um, I'm thinking the first thing to do is to cut this wheel so that it fits inside this inside diameter here um, and that way I'll be able to slide it in and that will give me uh, a, a good concentric circle. Um, so let's get started. Okay, so with much grinding and bump and banging and sanding I seem to have gotten this, uh, this gear installed correctly. Um, I'm about ready to tack weld in this joint um, some connections. It's all painted, so I'm going to have to grind it down. But uh, if you're doing the same thing with the same parts, this is roughly an inch and an eighth. I don't know if you can see. Inch and an eighth. Um, and if you're cutting out this, um, this sphere, from the inside uh, edge to the outer edge is an inch and five eighths. So when you get that to fit in there, you'll you'll have to adjust it because there's a couple of obstacles. <laughs> Obst uh, these uh, these circles right here are press fit, so on the inside they're um, they're pushed in. So when you get the the outside to fit, it won't get past here, and you got to beat the hell out of it with a hammer. Um, but some of the paint gives way on that and you're good. And the other thing is you don't want that to be too floppy. You want it to be nice and snug. Um, now, so the next thing I'm going to have to do here is get the worm gear situated. You can see the worm gear is going to interact with this, with this gear right here. And that's what's going to move it uh, around in circles. Um, the problem with that is the worm gear needs to interact with this gear at a specific angle. It can't be off to the side. It has to be very close to perpendicular. Um, for that to be dependable, you need this to not move back and forth. And you can see that there's a lot of slop in here, left and right. But uh, aside from figuring out some way of putting a bearing in there, um, we're going to assume this weld it will be the inside bearing. And what I'll do is I'll use this bar here on the worm gear 
and situate that behind the, the, the gear so that it can't move in that opposite direction. So now we need to build a flange so that this worm gear can be situated like this with that bar keeping that bar in, in place. So I gotta make a little L bracket um, so that this worm gear will work in that orientation. So there we go, off to the next little thing. All right, so now I got all that all in there. I got a, got a quick bead in there, if you can see. Got some good penetration too. Um, you can see in the back side here, I got a decent weld. It'll be good for what I need it to do. This next thing here is to get the worm gear in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the bracket from the, from the winch and I'm gonna mount it like this. Actually, I think I'm gonna put it so that it's right against the edge. Uh, but because this is some pretty cheap metal, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna repurpose this this piece that I cut off, um, and I'm gonna weld this in here like that, so it has a nice angle bracket. That'll that'll give it some good support um, in case it gets a little a little more torque than I expected. This is also pretty cheap metal, so um, it probably bend first time it goes under pressure. Okay, there you have it. Took the box, made a little extra support, used the box itself as a flange, put it in with a couple of half inch bolts so it's nice and sturdy. But you can see, the mechanism turns and it progresses nice and even. Also, you can see the back side of that worm gear is holding the back side of that gear, which will keep it from thrust in that direction. There you go, finished product. $40 winch, and you just got a deluxe engine stand.